purpose of this video is to provide a brief overview of genetic biocontrol so that efforts to develop and use gene drive technologies can be viewed in a useful context. This short video is intended to leave you with an appreciation of the variety of approaches, purposes, and intended outcomes associated with genetic biocontrol. Specifically, we'll learn what is meant by genetic biocontrol. We'll learn that there are two outcomes of interest to those developing genetic biocontrol technologies, population suppression and population modification. We'll learn that population suppression can be achieved by introducing fitness-lowering genes or by creating incompatible genetic interactions within target populations. We'll learn that population modification targets and alters phenotypes of the target organisms and does not aim to reduce the size of the population. We'll learn that genetic biocontrol strategies are often classified with respect to their intended persistence over time and the degree to which they can spread spatially. Terms such as self-limiting, self-sustaining, and localizing and non-localizing are often used. This is a heuristic system for thinking about genetic biocontrol technologies, but it's worth appreciating that genetic biocontrol technologies actually fall somewhere on a continuum of persistence and localization potential. What is biological control and genetic biological control? Biological control, or biocontrol, is widely used to control pests such as insects, mites, plants, and plant pathogens, and relies on the use of other organisms to act as the controlling agent. This might, for example, involve introducing or augmenting a pest's natural enemies. Genetic biocontrol is a form of biological control in which genetic variants or genetically modified forms of the pest organism are used as a controlling agent. The idea of using genetics to directly combat pest populations originated in the middle of the 20th century in the context of insect control. It was recognized that genetics might be used to eliminate target populations or even to modify them so they were no longer a problem or threat. Today, these technologies are being considered in the fight to reduce malaria, dengue transmission, as well as the impacts of invasive plants, animals, and insects on food security and biodiversity. Most progress has been made in developing population suppression strategies. While the number of examples of successful population modification strategies are far fewer. Let's look at a few technologies that can be used only for population suppression. The first and most well-established genetic control method is called the sterile insect technique, SIT. This method involves inundating a standing population of a target species with sterile males of the same species that were mass-produced and then sterilized before they were released into the environment. Sterilization has been done using gamma radiation, but transgenic approaches have been described. Once released and upon mating with wild fertile females, these sterile males satisfy the reproductive drive of females, but the females will produce no viable offspring. Regular, repeated releases of sterile males can result in suppression or eradication of the target population. This method is widely used today to control insects of economic importance. Modern variants of this method, sometimes referred to as autocidal methods, rely either on transgenic technologies or on a genetic phenomenon known as cytoplasmic incompatibility in order to reduce the fitness of females of the target population. The company Oxitec developed the transgenic autocidal system, referred to as RIDDLE, release of insects carrying dominant lethals, that they have been using to control populations of the mosquito Aedes aegypti in Brazil and elsewhere. Oxitec's riddle technology has also been modified, referred to as FS riddle, so that the autocidal effects can be transmitted for up to approximately 10 generations after being initially introduced and before it disappears from the environment. Others have developed different technology that has similar population suppression and persistence characteristics. One such technology is known as autosomal X shredder. 
The details of this and F.S. Riddle are not important in the context of this presentation. The company Mosquito Mate, along with the Google company Verily, have developed and are now deploying a non-transgenic Aedes aegypti control method based on a genetic phenomena known as cytoplasmic incompatibility. It's based on the release of only males harboring a unique intracellular bacteria symbiont known as Wolbachia. When these males mate with wild females, who naturally lack the symbiont, all of the offspring will die as embryos as a result of cytoplasmic incompatibility. This method is generally known as the incompatible insect technique, IIT. Sterile insect, autocidal, and cytoplasmic incompatibility approaches are referred to as self-limiting technologies because the released insects and the genes they harbor will not persist in the environment. They will persist for only one to 10 generations, depending on the technology. Continued regular release of the sterile, autocidal, or Wolbachia-carrying insects is required to sustain the population suppression effects. Because temporal persistence is limited, these technologies will have very limited spatial spread and will remain localized. One can think about these genetic biocontrol technologies mapping somewhere in a continuous technology space defined by persistence, time, and spread, space. The sterile insect, autocidal, and incompatibility technologies just discussed would be somewhere in this quadrant of that space, self-limiting and localizing. At this point, I'd like to introduce a genetic control technology that is self-limiting and localized, but results in population modification, not suppression. There aren't many examples of population modification technologies, but there are a few. In the United States and Europe, rabies has been and continues to be managed by oral vaccination of mammalian reservoirs of the virus. Raccoon, skunk, fox. Here, somatic genetics has been intentionally modified. Since immunity is not heritable, the effect is self-limiting and localized. While wildlife vaccination against rabies is perhaps the most successful population modification genetic biocontrol technology, it is being used against other zoonotic pathogens. Gene drive technologies are intended to be self-sustaining in that the transgenes involved are passed vertically from one generation to the next, in theory, indefinitely. Because transgenes that drive are preferentially transmitted to the next generation, they will increase in frequency in populations and spread through them. So they are non-localizing. The details of these gene drive technologies, such as Y chromosome X shredders, homing drives, and Medea, don't concern us here. What is important is that they can be used for population suppression and population replacement. There's also a non-transgenic, non-gene drive system based on Wolbachia-dependent cytoplasmic incompatibility that can have many of the characteristics of gene drive systems. When male and female Aedes aegypti infected with Wolbachia are released in sufficient numbers into a Wolbachia-free population, the Wolbachia infection will spread so that most of the mosquitoes will eventually contain Wolbachia. Wolbachia-containing Aedes aegypti are highly resistant to a large number of diverse human pathogenic viruses, normally transmitted by these mosquitoes, effectively reducing the vectoral capacity of the population. The World Mosquito Program is deploying this technology in a number of places in the world with good success. The long or even permanent persistence time of these drive or drive-like technologies allows them to be used for population suppression and replacement. Replacement might involve driving transgenes into and through populations of malaria-transmitting mosquitoes that confer resistance to the malaria parasite. These technologies would be located in this quadrant of the technology space, self-sustaining and non-localizing. 
There's an interesting class of technologies based on the genetic phenomena of underdominance that are self-sustaining, but with limited spreading potential. How these technologies work is of less importance here than is the fact that they exist. These technologies are being developed for population modification applications, and because of their inherent inability to spread easily to new populations, they are attractive for some applications. These technologies would be placed in this quadrant of the technology space, self-sustaining and localizing. There continues to be active research in new genetic biocontrol technologies that have new and useful persistence and spreading characteristics. One hypothetical design, referred to as daisy chain, is a gene drive system with a crude timing device that can be set to limit the number of generations the system remains active. These systems could be self-limiting, non-localizing, and capable of spreading. The widespread availability of transgenic technologies applicable to insects at the end of the 20th century created opportunities for creating new engineered genetic biocontrol systems where once only classical genetic approaches could be applied. The advent of powerful genome modification technologies based on RNA-guided DNA endonucleases such as Cas9 from Streptococcus pyogenes in the early 21st century have further enhanced those opportunities and have made the creation of powerful, engineered gene drive systems technically feasible. Today, genetic biocontrol is enjoying a resurgence in interest for combating particularly refractory problems in public health entomology, such as the eradication of human malaria in Africa and the control of dengue virus transmitting Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. The elimination of invasive plant and insect species that most impact crops and livestock yields, and the elimination of invasive plants, animals, and insects that most threaten the world's biodiversity. In, for example, Australia, New Zealand, and on islands where non-native mammal species threaten native species. This video was intended to provide you with an overview of genetic biocontrol. You have seen that there are now a variety of technologies and that these technologies can vary in their intended persistence times and spreading potential. These differences could enable these technologies to be used in a variety of circumstances.